Hey guys, welcome back. It is episode two of season two of Cobra Kai here on AfterBuzz TV. Is Hawk secretly a villain? Is there some romance brewing in Miyagi-Do? And are the LaRussos the best car salesmen in the world? We're going to talk about that and more. We'll see you guys in just one second. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz <laughs> Every time lets me down. I just think, we should just, just waiting for it. We should do like an acapella. You're the best around Ooh. version. We should like work on it for the next uh, show. Uh, us or like good singers. <laughs> I was gonna say you're asking the dad last year. Can we recruit some friends? <laughs> the general Phone us. friend feature. <laughs> Uh, guys, welcome back. It is season two, episode two, Back in Black up here, Cobra Kai on AfterBuzz TV. Very excited to talk to you guys about this one. Binging the show, uh, coming in here to talk about it. This season is great. Um, mm -hmm. I've got a, I've got a really really wonderful panel, a beautiful panel. I'm gonna start here <laughs> oh, right now. I got so Tammy Gavea. Yes. You doing? Hi everyone, Tammy Gavea here. <laughs> Veronica Valencia. Hey everyone. Finally, Mr. Michael Klaus, my brother, Cobra Kai. <laughs> We're ready to go. Yeah, strike first, strike fast, hard. Hard. Strike no mercy. Yeah. Sure. Strike first, strike, strike hard. Strike first, strike hard, no mercy. Yeah. I always say strike fast, so I think I'm dyslexic. I just think <laughs> I, I, it's one of those things I'm like, oh, okay. I've You've been hit one times. too many times. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, you know we hit. We too really hit. Too many crane kicks to the head. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, so, guys, there's a lot to cover today on the show. Let's start with a little bit of what's going on with Hawk, some new students, the, the growth of Cobra Kai as a dojo. Um, I just want to just... Is Hawk a dick? Like, does he? Yes. yes. What do you guys think? Yes. I mean, I think he's great, but he's definitely a d bag. But do you think he's like just like strutting and enjoying being a cool kid, or do you think he's like actually bad? Like, do you think he's kind of a villain? I still think it might come from a place of insecurity, and in that he was, you know, that boy that was bullied just last season, and I think he's trying really hard to keep up the confidence so that he doesn't fall back into that insecure kid that he was. Yeah. Partially that. It's. I think it's normal to go from one extreme, which is being severe severely bullied to another extreme, which is no one's ever going to mess with me. Yeah. You know how one feels and yeah. you're like, now I want to be on top. Now you don't, it's almost like you don't see the bullying is bad. You saw that you were weak. And so I think that is what he's going through is that now he's like, well, now I'm strong. Bullying was never bad to him. He was bad because he was weak. So now that he's strong, he sees that he can bully. Right. Mm -hmm. Also, his name is Hawk. He's dating a girl named Moon. There's just so I, many possibilities. So <laughs> Hawk and Moon. I feel like they, they should be like a folk band or something. Like that <laughs> yeah. that storyline is a, that's a that's a very minor storyline. Yeah. But I just am like, do we ship this as a couple? <laughs> yeah. Right. She was. I don't know. <laughs> we talked to her at the thing on the Paley Fest thing. Yeah. And she it was her first event ever. So this is her first role she's ever been in. And she's a musical theater girl. Wow. And she was so sweet. She That's was so, sweet. so excited, like mm. genuine excitement. Like, this is my first one of these ever. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, this is so cool. Congratulations. So big shout to Hannah Kappel. She's she's killing it. But uh, I, I don't know if I like buy into it. What I asked her, and I thought about this, was like, they really play up in season one the sort of like standard roles, the, like mean girls sort of style roles of like mm -hmm. the high school clique. And she's like obviously the... She's, I guess, like the Amanda Seyfried character. She's yeah. like the hot, dumb girl kind of, yeah. like who doesn't say that much. Yeah. And so it's cool that they pluck her out of that role and place her in something else where mm -hmm. she can just be like, that's not actually real. People yeah. are people and I have a personality. Yeah. And I like this guy. So now I'm mm -hmm. going to go be a part of this thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I like that they're doing that. I wonder if they're going to actually develop their relationship more as the what do you guys think I would like to see if they would develop more of a relationship I think that'd be really great especially because like you're saying Ben they plucked her from the mean girl role but they kind of plucked her from that mean girl role to kind of like another mean, mean girl mean girl <laughs> role because Hawk is you know being perceived as the bully right now so right. it's not it's not like she's escaping that kind of you know negative reputation Yeah for sure I love seeing the two wild childs together yeah. <laughs> uh, to me, they're like two wild childs. Hawk and Moon. Yes. <laughs> um, so uh, back on the other side of things, over at Miyagi-Do, we have wheel technique. Uh, and Daniel's trying to figure out how to be a proper sensei. Um, and he's looking at all his tools. What metaphors do I have? What household you know, techniques? Like, I know that Miyagi is a genius. And he had his things mm -hmm. like that, you know, trained with discipline. Do you think if you just, like, walked around your apartment or just, like, after Buzz TV, you'd, like, look at something and be like, I could turn that into a lesson? I could do. They you hold this box here and wave your hand like this. <laughs> that has been one of the interesting storylines that I, or interesting parts of the show that I'm like, eh, I don't know if I'm shipping. Is even with Johnny, like 
are you qualified to be a teacher? Just because you <laughs> took classes 30 years ago, are you a good teacher? Right. Totally agree with you. I, it's Johnny, so yes, 100%. <laughs> he's got life lessons to teach, man. Like, that guy he wakes up in the morning, he's eating, like, Slim Jim and beers. Oh His first God. sip is Coors Light. How would... much is Coors Light paying That's for this exactly show? That's exactly what I was going to ask. What? How much are they making in sales because of this show? I think you guys are, unless I'm mistaken, it's not Coors Light. He's drinking Coors. Coors. It's Coors. Coors yeah. and Bank of Coors. He's oh, drinking yeah, the Coors Light. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're it's right. a whole it's different the, level. In, There's no In light. like a red cool. stripe bottle, too. <laughs> yeah. This is not a can. He's the bottle, glass bottle. Yeah. And I have to say, going back to the Coors, the opening of, of the show, Back in Black, you know, with the car, the Challenger getting ready, yep. and the mm-hmm. two, the you know, Miguel and Johnny both getting ready, and then Johnny, his breakfast is the beer, and Miguel's is the orange juice, and then the meeting in the courtyard. It's oh cute. Oh my gosh, it was so yep. great. Yeah, no, I definitely love that. I mean, that's the thing is like it, and I think every show is sort of like this. You're supposed to have the A, the A characters that everybody kind of loves, and maybe some people really love Ralph Macho's story and they really want to see him win, but I think most people are pretty into Johnny and Miguel. It feels like that's yeah. the. Right? That's yeah. the driving force behind the show. I love that you bring it up because for me as a viewer, I'm obviously loving Johnny's story, but I feel like in the first story, the first Karate Kid movie was all about Johnny and his perspective and how he viewed, uh, uh, no, excuse me, Daniel's perspective and how he viewed Johnny as a bully. And I feel like as an audience viewer, I'm watching this, and again, perspective, but I'm like, wow, Daniel's kind of the jerk in this entire yeah. season. Yes. Because like you were saying, Tammy, he just will not throw Johnny a bone. 100%. Um, so now another one of the things that happens is Miguel finds out that Robbie is Johnny's son. And I, when it actually happened in the episode, I was like, wait, he didn't know that? Like, that, I was kind of taken aback. I couldn't, I didn't remember that that was like a thing he wasn't aware of. I so, think one of the things to remember with that is that it, they're in Los Angeles. So they could have easily went to different schools and there's yeah. thousands of people. Yep. I, don't, I mean, I went to a very small school. So that, that, that thought me, that thought initially was like, Wait, really? You're in the same town? But then I'm like, oh, that town is Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah. I almost oh, okay. just mean like them competing in the tournament and everything. Just like oh, the amounts they've true. interacted. Like yeah. how yeah. they didn't know that. I was like, I guess it makes sense, but... It makes sense, but I think it's just like, it's confusing to us as an audience because we have watched all season one of Robbie and Johnny's rela- like strange relationships. So it's like, okay, it's very obvious that they're father and son, but Johnny doesn't really talk about that. So, of course, he probably wouldn't know. I mean, I guess it's like if you date a girl and you guys break up and you start dating another girl and you go to like somewhere where you're all going to be, maybe you work really hard to not acknowledge the other person that you used to date because like you don't really want to engage in that conversation. Mm-hmm. And if you work hard enough at it and they don't want to acknowledge either, then nobody yep. really pays yeah. attention. And I guess that's kind of what's happened here is like they're all in the same place, but he didn't want to let Miguel know and Robbie obviously didn't want to acknowledge it. So they just stayed separate. Yeah, I guess it wasn't that surprising, but I, I didn't realize until that moment that that was actually the case. Um, speaking of Robbie, there's some stuff going on in his home life. We get so sad. a portal back into his his mom, his like, who like her role in this story and what's going on feels way more like it belongs in an R-rated movie than this show. It's so disturbing. <laughs> yeah, disturbing. It's really disturbing on so many levels. Yeah, like yeah. I feel like that's like that's like a storyline I'd see like in The Wire or something like that. Yeah, where, and somebody would like be dying and ODing. There'd be like some really really bad stuff going on. Um, but obviously, you know, it's shows that are PG, it's okay for them to use that type of stuff as long as they do it tastefully. And I think this is done well, mm-hmm. but it does show a little bit of like why he's gravitated towards having this like guiding force. It also makes me think though, and I think they've taken his character past this, but at a certain point, are we going to see him kind of like, you know, like maybe like he lashes out and like robs the house that he's staying in and like, you know what I mean? Like I could see them going down that. It feels a little simple, but I could see it happening. Like Rob, like like Daniel he's staying with the yeah. Russos right. he and like Robbie, steals a yeah. bunch of stuff and leave and just like you know like yeah because he has all this misplaced anger and he's like a confused kid and is mm-hmm. right like I don't know I think it's possible yeah. I think it's definitely possible for him to have setbacks you know it's like we, he's done a very good job of Robbie's character's done a very good job of kind of developing like I said from bad boy to like golden hero but there's definitely a chance for setback especially because we kind of saw that with Miguel last season yeah and I think it's a it's a trigger thing. Yeah. Something could trigger him, just like you know what we what we saw uh, last season with you know the, the car wash or not the car the car dealership with something would happen he'd, he'd storm off or he'd, you know yeah there's there's triggers that you could he still hit so I definitely am with you on that Ben of I would not be surprised to see something like that see I almost want to say I I can't see that happening just because in the first season Robbie to me passed the test when his two friends well 
whatever the you guys. want to call them, yeah, the yeah, guys, yeah, yeah. you know, wanted him to open up the dealership or what have you. Yeah. Right. And he refused. And I think ever since then, he really looks up to Daniel. I think so, too. I mean, he's definitely a father figure. Yeah. So I don't know if he would jeopardize it. Yeah, I don't like know if that. I see it as likely. I just was thinking, like, he is this confused kid, and he has this really dark thing going on. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I actually, two episodes in, I'm not totally sure where the story is going to go because I, I don't think that they will spend eight more episodes in season two just kind of like rehashing of like an accelerated version of season one i think mm-hmm. there has to be a big twist something's gonna have to happen to really make season two pop like uh, i don't know what it's gonna be necessarily yeah. but uh you know it's, a, it's it's boiling right now so um on the one side of things we have johnny and crease and now johnny is trying to almost like show off like he feels like scrutinized i think by crease when crease is there like he's got to be tougher on the students so mm-hmm. you get the cement mixer thing um running around in a cement mixer <laughs> <laughs> like I would not do that. Just straight, like no. straight up. I don't give, I, like I don't give a rat's no. ass if I was like. A, no, yes, sensei thing for you. No, you just wouldn't blindly getting inside a cement mixer and like trying to. Are you kidding? I love how they hit it with the cement truck driver coming. He's like, these are kids. Yeah, you didn't say kids. <laughs> and yeah. it's like what? <laughs> yeah, it. Um, it's definitely, and and you're seeing more and more and more. And it, obviously with the way that the episode ends with the two of them getting beers and running into, da- into Daniel, like Johnny is trying so hard to not let the mistakes of the past mm-hmm. dictate the future, but he's failing right now. He's it's uh, right. Because of crease. Yeah. yeah. He's a bad influence, man. Yeah. It's a bad influence. Do you think he went harder um, on the kids training at that one point just to kind of like show crease like, hey, I can do this. You can go away kind of thing. Uh, meh, meh, kinda. I think he hopes Crease is gonna go away, right? He's like, oh, you're here a day early, you know? Oh, geez, today, okay. You know, I think he doesn't know how to get rid of him. And, and like, I, I mean, that's gonna have to come to a head at some point. I don't expect them to be teamed up the whole season. I think it's highly likely. Yeah, I, I think, think there's a split. I think Kevin, somebody predicted it last season on the panel. It might have been Rick. He's not with us this season that uh, Crease is gonna start another dojo. And the, and the mm. most evil kids oh. will go be a part of that dojo. Now, luckily, I have actually not watched past episode two yet. So I'm going to be binging a lot tonight. Me too. Because I really didn't want, like, it's really hard on the binge shows to it's watch tough. all of them ahead of time and then try to forget what you know. Mm-hmm. So you mm-hmm. end up saying something from a later episode. So I actually don't know what's going to happen. But it wouldn't surprise me if the crease thing happened. Um, so, but anyway, on the other side of things, you have you have what's going on with Daniel. And... Uh, and Robbie and Sam and, and just sort of like their whole side, they're much more passive training. But in the middle of all this, uh, he gets this call, Ralph Macho gets this call that he has to go sell cars. And it's a good reminder that Johnny just has this in front of him. That's all he's doing. He's trying mm-hmm. to, to he's trying to build Cobra Kai. That's his business. That's his life. That's all he's got. And on the other side, it's like you have to be reminded that Daniel's got a life. He's got a wife and he's got these kids and he's got a family and he's got income and he has to go completely shift gears and sell cars. Mm -hmm. Which I think it makes the stakes higher for Johnny. Definitely. Because like you said, this is it for him. Yeah. Yeah, he's way hungry. He's way more Sly Stallone than Dolph Lundgren (laughs) in Rocky Analogies. Um, So they sell the cars um, and Amanda encourages Daniel to be his own teacher so he... Like, you know, he should come up with his own lessons. That's where he comes up with this new and improved wheel technique. And they start to lean a little more into Robbie and Sam. Sam, yeah. I don't like it. I'm just going to say it right now. Really? Not a fan of that that ship. From his end to her end. I just, it just. He's not right for who? I do you just, think it's kind? Do you think it's forced? Like yes. it's obvious. Like oh, they're yeah. training together. Of course, they're gonna fall for each other, kind it, of thing. It feels forced, but it also feels like maybe it's forced because it's supposed to set up the the Robbie Miguel. Like that's really what it's for, right? Yeah. She's she's there to drive their stories yep. in this moment. I don't actually think that they want us to buy into the Robbie Sam romance, but maybe they do. I mean, do you guys not the, buy? Not in? in the long term. I think they want us to buy it into the short term to be able to put our emotions uh, of Robbie and Miguel together. Yeah. It's a little weird in 2019 to have a storyline, a female storyline, entirely based to serve the storylines of two male characters. Mm. That doesn't exactly feel like the way writing's going anymore. It feels a little thin, actually. Which is why I'm interested of, like, is she going to fight someone? But yeah, yeah, I mentioned last time, la- last episode we were talking about one, is that I think sh- they have to have a bigger role for her. Yeah. Because right now, at the end of episode one, she's like, okay, I'll train. You're like... What happened? You yeah. just thought about it and changed yeah. your mind? It was very quick, her whole turnaround. Yeah. Obviously, they hinted at, hinted at it at the end of last season that, oh, she might join. But immediately, she's like, oh, you cleaned the yeah. floors? I don't got to do anything. Uh, let's train. Yeah. You know, I had that thought, but I also had that thought of 
Miguel's out of the picture. She's heartbroken. What am I going to do to not think about him? That is a good so point. Part, they're on summer, too, so yeah. she does have a lot of time. So mm-hmm. part of it was last season of her stepping back into her girl power, you know, reconnecting with that part of herself that she had forgotten, and now just trying to get over a broken heart. Right. Yeah, and I, I, and I do like that she's training because it, it allows to bring her into the fold as a as a character beyond what we're talking about. And it's only episode two, so I can't really say that the writing is thin. Like, I don't know where this is going. And as I suggested in episode one with the burning trash can, there's red herrings. They, it's very obvious. Mm-hmm. They're, they're putting that on a rotating wooden platter for us. Um, and so, um, but Daniel runs into Kreese and Johnny, and he sees that Kreese is not dead, and his blood friggin' boils. Oh, he's <sighs> so yeah. good. Yep. I have a question, though, and yep. this kind of brings back to my whole point about Robbie. I'm curious about why you guys think Johnny, or excuse me, Daniel was going to go talk to Johnny. I assume it was something about Robbie because, you know, uh, Daniel finds out that Robbie is basically evicted and he has to live with them and his mom's out of town and he doesn't want to bring in Johnny because he he's so bitter towards Johnny. But as a parent, you kind of can't. You know, if your child's in that situation, you I feel, again, not a parent, but I feel like it's you should respect the other parent regardless and, like, this is your child and clue them in. And I feel like he was going to go do the right thing and do that and then completely got sidetracked by seeing yeah. Crease. And that just serves the storyline more and more. Daniel's the villain. He's the childish one who can't see yep. past his own ego. He's way more wrapped up in this petty rivalry, and he won in the 80s. He didn't even lose. Mm-hmm. And just and he won, and he's the one who's holding on to it so much more than Johnny is. Like, Johnny's getting beers with Crease. Like, I can't see that ending well. But right now, <laughs> they're just drinking a couple Coors the Banquet beer. That's all they're doing. And, like, <laughs> it, you know, and so, and so uh, I, I think Daniel's the villain in that situation. Yeah, and, you know, mm-hmm. Daniel sees the two of them drinking beer and thinks he doesn't care about his son. Why should I even start a conversation with him about yeah. Robbie when, you know what, he's out having beers with Crease? He's like, I don't want Crease anywhere near Robbie because he thinks about Robbie as his son now. Do you guys he's like how the writers are almost, you know, writing them as children? Do you think, we think that's a major on purpose thing to give us flashbacks to 1983 when the first one came out? I mean, do we think that's a, they're specifically writing them as children? Yes. Absolutely. I think that's what makes the show work because they want viewers to buy into these characters still having the, the childlike mm-hmm. rivalry. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I mean, on, on, on that but note. We, but we said it's almost turning us off. Two episodes, season two. Okay. So let's get we'll through. See, we'll yeah. see how they develop. Exactly. Yeah. So at this moment, then are we still all on the same page? Same question after episode one. Whose storyline are you buying into the most at the end of episode two? Still Johnny. Still Johnny. Okay, yeah, me too. Still Crease. Still Crease. You still want to see that the most. I still want Daniel, like, Come on! Yeah, well, step they're up. they're giving him the be- the best opportunity for growth. Yes. Whereas the other guys, I mm-hmm. feel like you kind of they're a little more who they're gonna be. Though Miguel, still unclear, still unclear. And then maybe Robbie is the, is the black swan. Maybe here's <laughs> something else. I don't know, um, guys. That's gonna wrap up episode two here of Cobra Kai. We've got a bunch more coming up. Uh, just a quick message from a sponsor, really quickly. Yeah, absolutely. You guys, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Hopefully you enjoyed the last episode. This is why we're the ESPN of TV talk here at After Buzz. And this is one of several shows that we have. And again, did you guys pay anything for this? No, it's free. All of our other content uh, is free. And all we ask is that you go like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend. If you guys enjoyed this, probably your buddy's gonna t- gonna enjoy this. Literally just shoot him a text and say, hey, guess what I just watched? Watch this. Go tweet about it. Just show some support. That's all we ask. We really enjoy it. I know we've all enjoyed After Buzz, and we want to continue bringing content for you. So, that's simple. <laughs> yeah, like, subscribe, comment. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, Klaus, where can the folks find you if they want you to follow along with your career? You can find me on Instagram and on Twitter <laughs> at the only MC. Veronica. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at it's me, Veronica underscore V. And Tammy. And you can find me on Twitter at Tammy Govea, Insta and Facebook, Tammy Govea Official. And you guys can find me at Ben Baby Media. Be sure to check out the interviews with the cast that we did at Paley this week. They're all up on the red carpet events and specials After Buzz TV channel. We'll be back with episode three very soon. Bye, guys. Bye. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to After Buzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. (laughs) The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.